Hello everyone, Anita here and welcome to another video. It is a Christmas video, so Merry Christmas to everyone. I hope you enjoyed this illustration. I am absolutely in love with it. As you can see, the line art is extremely complicated. Um, and I am actually experimenting again this week, so I hope uh, everything is going to come exactly as I wanted. Uh, I've separated the line art into two sections, the one in blue pencil and one in uh, red pencil. And that's because I wanted the background to be mostly on blue, ba on blue watercolor, so I would be painting with blue first. And I wanted to see if it would be easier to see underneath um, the blue, <laughs> which I have problems, of course, with the blue pencil. And so, uh, as usual, we're painting on 300 gram Arsh watercolor paper. Uh, it is not stretched, I just uh, taped it to my foam board. And um, the first thing I'm doing is I'm actually working with the, a little bit of a shadow, it's just an underpainting. Um, it's really, uh, you don't really see it that much under the paint in the end, after I put all the layers, but it kind of gives me a better idea where everything is and um, helps separate the shapes. For me personally, it's, it's a really important step. And so this illustration, as I said, it's a Christmas illustration. Uh, I really wanted to create an illustration that would be a little bit of like a, you know, quote unquote undercover Christmas illustration, so it's not too obvious, so that I could display it throughout the year and, um, you know, it could also be used for different situations. <laughs> um, so this is these, these two characters are from my original characters from the story I'm still working on, um, and it probably will work for a very long time. And they are um, they are making mold mold wine. Um, for the whole painting process, I wanted to check if that's what it's called. But uh, yeah, let's call it mold wine. <laughs> so basically, wine with spices and some oranges and cinnamon and all kind of um, good stuff. I'm a big fan of of wine. Uh, I'm I'm not like a connoisseur or anything. I'm just really I really like sweet wine. And there is nothing really more satisfying than after a long day of wo of work. You just sit with your book and a little glass of wine and you're just enjoying yourself. And it's so nice. And uh, especially in the Christmas season, I really love adding stuff to my wine and tea and everything in general. And the other day I was looking on Pinterest and I saw this really, really cool pictures of just mulled wine. <clears throat> a mulled wine. Oh. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Uh, so I saw those really, really awesome illustrations and uh, I've been really fighting with creative blog. I recently just, um, I, I don't have any ideas for paintings. Um, I, I don't really talk about it that often, I think, but I'm uh, reusing a lot of my older ideas uh, for, my, for my recent paintings. And this, is, this one is completely original. This is a new one. So I was really, really happy because that picture of the mold wine just uh, inspired me. <laughs> so here I'm uh, done with the underpainting for uh, for the foreground, and I'm working on the background. And as you can see here, that's what I've been talking about. I wanted to have the whole background a little bit in the darkness, so I've decided I wanted to paint it on blue, so that every single color I put on top will be affected by that blue. Now, that's not exactly the best <laughs> choice I could have made because a lot of the pots have colored uh, potions inside them. Um, and so when I, of course, layer <laughs> any brighter colors like yellow or orange on top of that blue, it creates this really, really nah, ugly, ugly shade. But um, all in all, it made my life much easier because... Um, um, except those really bright colors, which I shouldn't have used to begin with. In the end, I felt like it kind of took all out, like took over the background. I'm I'm happy with it nonetheless, but um, I'm really used to thinking and analyzing my paintings afterwards, after I'm done with painting, just to see what I could have done better, design wise, painting wise, process wise. You know, just trying to to evolved to make myself better 
And uh, I know you guys don't like me saying that, but it's not. I'm not really criticizing myself. I'm just purely trying to get better and analyzing my painting process afterwards really helps. Especially those videos, like if I see myself um, right here painting uh, on video, it really helps. And as you can see, I actually paint upside down. It's not my editing, I paint <laughs> upside down. Uh, for some reason, whenever I paint those big areas, um, or flat washes, I paint them upside down, uh, especially when the foreground is busy. It just helps me make everything really uh, steady because I can just rest my hand and I don't need an extra piece of paper underneath. And uh, I can just, you know, I can just paint without worrying that I'm going to smudge the whole foreground or I'm going to leave a lot of nasty, you know, sweaty marks on my paper. I'm really paranoid about it uh, ever since I started getting little spots and during the summer, uh, you know, from fingertips or just um, things. And so I'm really paranoid about it. And I usually have a piece of paper under my arm. But um, in this case, it, it was just, I don't know, it didn't want to work well. And uh, so here is another... Here's how it looks like right now after I've added two layers of blue. Thinking about it now, I should have probably have used, uh, although I'm not sure, but I think it will be much nicer to have used the blue pencil, the red pencil, uh, only to outline the bottles. I don't think it was necessary to do the whole background with it. I can't really explain, it's not such a big deal, uh, but I really like blue pencil better under under my um, watercolor rather than the red pencil. So what I'm doing here is I'm uh, painting every single uh, plank of wood in the background separately, and I'm making it overflow with paint so that it creates, when, once it dries, it creates that, that harder edge. And I'm first working on every other one, and then I'm once that dries, I'm coming back and adding um, and, uh, the rest. So that, uh, and I'm really, really making it. I'm not trying to make it perfect. I'm actually really oh, um, aiming for all kinds of little imperfections. So as you can see here, I'm actually adding paint after I'm I'm done with the wash. I'm I'm adding paint. Uh, also overflowing some of the existing already, the planks I have already painted. And that really helps me to create that, that uneven, a bit rustic, a bit, you know, used wood effect. I really, really loved it. <clears throat> and now I'm uh, doing another experiment. I'm using the same lot of pen that I've used in my last painting uh, to paint some rocks on top of a watercolor wash. Now, the experiment here is to see if I can um, use a heat gun on top. So what I did is I, I've, I drew basic shapes of rocks and I'm overflowing it with paint. I'm really, really... This, this whole painting is um, complete opposite to what I would normally do because I'm doing most of the things in one layer and just putting a lot of paint. And uh, as you can see here, once I took over that, uh, took off that, that uh, masking fluid, I had uh, some tears uh, in paper it's in only one spot. I have no idea why. I used um, heat gun, but very, very gently so that I wouldn't overheat it in one spot. So I kind of just run the heat gun from quite a far away. It wasn't a big problem because as you can see here, I'm adding another layer of paint and I'm kind of doing... <laughs> um, I wanted to have the wall look, look really dirty and used, so I've uh, put a very saturated paint layer and then I dropped water into it. Um, and that, that made it really, really look dirty and used. <laughs> and here I'm using, I'm doing some outlines. Uh, I do most of the outlines um, off camera just because they took a long time and I kind of I was jumping from one spot to the other and adding it between layers and it wasn't all at once. Um, but I've added, uh, I've used my pit pen uh, in um, sepia, I think, the brown one. And it worked really well in the background because the background is so saturated and dark. Uh, it didn't overpower the colors. Um, I really dislike when the, recently at least, when the line is too dark and it's... Um, it has to blend nicely. <laughs> so now I'm pretty much done with the basic 
background. Uh, of course, I will be adding the bottles and the items uh, as I go, but I will be using the colors that I use in the foreground. So for that, I need to start working on the foreground. Mm, so the first thing I'm doing is putting in the wood, so the whole table, so that I have all the shapes stand out more to me, so that I can just see you know, what needs to be filled in. And the trick for the glass here is that I'm putting the very diluted version of the same color I'm using for the wood, so, um, so it looks like there is a glass layer. Uh, normally I would probably use a, a thin layer of gouache, that's, that's also possible, but I wanted the colors to be very, very clear, and I wanted to have a little bit more control over how, how saturated the colors are, so uh, I left myself the option of gouache at the, to the very end. I didn't use it in the end, but uh, I, I wanted to have that option on top of already existing, you know, glass. <laughs> so that's why you can see that uh, whatever is under the glass is a bit lighter. Uh, so now I'm just basically adding shapes. I'm adding the flat colors, um, trying to do a little bit of shading, but later on I've decided that I wanted to do the shading with colored pencils and a Copic marker. A Copic marker which I haven't used for a very long time because um, I use my favorite W3, which is a warm gray, uh, for shading. And I really love it, but it makes the colors rather dull. And it, at some point I just, I just have those phases. I wanted to have a really nice and saturated in very bright pictures. But this one, this style, the style of these characters is, um, the, it comes from the very beginning of my painting, let's call it career, uh, when I was using a lot of the Copic. So it actually fits. I, I come back to it, to that, to that Copic, to the warm gray. That's why you can see me mostly just putting, um, flat colors or small gradients, because I knew that I would be coming back with the Copic and with colored pencils um, afterwards. Uh, plus, there is a lot of small details in this painting, and it's actually easier and less time consuming to just have one color um, and just go af over it, uh, with, with, with not with paint, at least for me. <laughs> so here I'm doing the mold wine, and I'm so happy, uh, because the, of course, watercolors are so transparent, I really love that transparency. And I love using it for those, let's call it special effects. So you saw me there in that bowl. I filled in the first, the shapes um, of the spices and the oranges. And then I covered it all with a thin layer of the mold wine, very deep red color. And it's so beautiful. I love it. Very happy with it. And so I'm putting more um, colors. I was a bit struggling with the foreground because... I felt like it wasn't bright enough <laughs> compared to the background. And that's the issue I, ha I was talking about in the beginning. I feel like I've added too many bright colors in the background. Uh, I should have put a little bit less saturated colors in those bubbles because now, even though it looks really nice, I'm not complaining. Uh, I'm really happy with it. Uh, just from, you know, thinking about it for the future, I should probably have done it a little bit less saturated because now the, the eye does not stop on her. Um, as much it goes to background but I kind of fixed it in the last little bits which unfortunately did not get uh, recorded this painting took a ridiculous time to finish um, I've painted it over f um, four days now bear in mind that I was cleaning in at the time because it's Christmas season I just I didn't realize that I did, wasn't recording and my card ran out in my camera so I didn't add the white bits uh, in the video. But that's okay, there wasn't that many and I only used a pen for it, not paint, um, because I was just so tired with painting, I wanted to have it done as quick as possible. And for once my, my white pen, uh, gel pen, was cooperating. Um, so here I was adding uh, the cat, and the cat was a problem for me, because I wasn't sure how to, how to, you know, make it fit how not to over, let's call it, over render it. I didn't know how to do it. Um, so I was just like kind of drawing it in sections, um, filling in the colors first, like I, and then I, I moved into something else. So the cat was kind of neglected till the end. 
So here you can see me adding uh, some shading in the Copic and adding some a little glow in um, the colored pencil, just making it look a little bit more magical. So I, I usually show you only one section, but I added everywhere else as well, um, just just to save time. Really, there's so many details in this painting that it just it just took a ridiculous amount of time to just finish everything. Uh, here I'm shading a little bit of the uh, the wood, and also trying not to. It's really hard for me not to concentrate on just one area. Recently, uh, I just want to make it perfect, but I know that if I do this. Uh, I'm going to regret it later when I have to match everything else. So you just see me just jumping a little bit from place to place because I was trying to make it even, just so uh, everything is uh, evenly rendered. And here I'm trying to add a little bit of shading over the mold wine, just to add that same glow as the bottles have. It did not work as brightly as I was hoping. Um, but that's because the background was a bit darker and the colors I wanted to use were not as saturated. And my co my water, uh, excuse me, my colored pencils are not uh, of such a great quality, so... You just have to, you know, live with what you have. <laughs> and so um, I keep adding colors and I keep um, shading. This painting really was a bit of a... Once I thought something was done, <laughs> It really wasn't. There was always something else to finish. In the end, I really, really managed to pull through. And this is actually the final illustration. As, as I mentioned, the, the white detail part was cut. So I'm add, I've added a lot of white details. You can see me. There is not that many in the background. Big, big point. There are not many details in the background. I have concentrated with them in the foreground and also added them mostly to the edges, to her cheeks, eyes, added a little bit of a pattern on her apron, I've added pattern on the little sugar uh, container. And then here is the cat, I'm extremely pleased with the cat. All in all, it's, it's, a, it's an amazing illustration, I'm really really happy with it, it's definitely the best illustration of this year that I've made. So I am extremely happy and I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. I know this video is a little bit messy, uh, especially at the end because I was just so tired, but that's the final illustration. I wish you guys extremely Merry Christmas. Extremely Merry Christmas, is that even a thing? Now it is. <laughs> Please leave me a like and uh, if you've enjoyed this video it helps a lot and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, and yeah. This is probably the last painting video this year, so um, very Merry Christmas <laughs> and I will see you guys probably next year. Bye!